Yes, guys, Andy Cards here. Thanks very much for checking out today's video. Hopefully you've been keeping up with all the content that's been coming out because we are releasing videos, we, me, on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Today's video is all about short game, shot selection, club selection, and also the level of difficulty. And generally, level of difficulty is dependent on your own skill level. So take this shot, for example. I'm on a par three, I've hit it too far to the left, and I've got a very awkward shot to a front pin. Now, as I look at this shot, I've got to go over the bunker, I've got to go downhill towards the flag, and I've not really got much green to work with. Now, as a scratch golfer, or if, if you're watching this as maybe a single figure handicap, you'll be thinking to yourself, I need to get this in quite close and rescue my par. If you are of a, hand, a higher handicap, maybe talking, let's say 15 up to into the 20s, you might be thinking, don't do anything stupid, don't knock it, don't knock it into this bunker here, or don't thin it over the back, okay? Two very, very common shots that we see a lot. So we've gotta be looking at this from a score perspective and a consistency perspective, because consistently, you have to decide whether you can pull this shot off. Now, I think every single golfer watching this video can pull off the shot where they hit it nice and high and it finishes right next to the flag and they tap it in for par. The consistency aspect of that is can you do it more often than not, okay? So if the answer is no, then we're gonna be looking out towards the bigger side of the green here. But you do have to be aware that you don't wanna to go too far to the left. If we go too far to the left, you're now leaving yourself a long putt, which would then work out to be three putt territory, okay? Which is on a par three, a five, okay? Double bogey, for what I would think is no reason, okay? Because we need to get this ball still inside of 20 feet. So trying to get this ball inside of 20 feet doesn't automatically mean this is an easy golf shot, okay? We still need to, we still need to approach the shot correctly, we still need to set up correctly, we still need to swing the club correctly, and most important of all, we still need to strike the ball correctly as well. So I'm gonna take this first shot. Preparation, eh? Need two gloves. I'm gonna take this first shot with a 58 degree and I'm gonna go straight for the flag, okay? Now, I want a little bit more height on the ball and I want the ball to land a little bit softer. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and open the club face and open my stance and swing along the line of my feet because that's just crazy talk, all right? That's not necessary. What we do need though is a 58 degree to be a 62 or a 64, just adding a little bit of tiny loft on there for a little bit of extra height and stop. So to achieve that, I'm gonna put the ball position slightly further forward in my stance. I'm actually gonna pull my hands slightly to the right of the golf ball, okay? So I'm just adding a little bit of extra loft, okay? But I also tell clients as well, I'm using a bit more of the bounce, okay? When we see too many people with the hands forward, taking the bounce out of play, and it creates a bit of a digging action. So I'm gonna pull the hand slightly to the right of the ball, which is gonna help me get a bit of extra loft. Ball position slightly further forward. As a result of that, I'm gonna need a slightly longer backswing. That was a big dig. Uh, slightly longer backswing, so the ball pops up nice and high into the air. Now that wasn't a great shot, to be perfectly honest. It's finished around about 10 to 15 feet away. It's a, I would say it's a very safe bogey, okay? It wasn't an exceptional shot but it was, it was okay. If you were trying to approach this shot from a more safe perspective, okay? So you want it to be a little bit safer with your shot. I wouldn't change anything about your setup. You're not, what, I would, what I would teach is a normal setup. And what I would teach as a normal setup is the ball position a bit more central in the stance, flare my left foot open to encourage lots of body rotation through the shot, and I keep my hands relatively level with the golf ball and always practicing getting the bounce of the club gliding across the ground. So on this particular shot, my aim line here is gonna be just left of the bunker. So I'm taking this, trying to take the sand out of play. So my aim line is just left of the bunker and I can hit a nice standard chip shot to the left side of the flag, goes down the flag and I've got around about 15, probably just as good as my first attempt to be perfectly honest, with less stress, 15 to 20 feet for my par, which you would like to think you could back yourself to make bogey from their worst case scenario, taking the double bogey out of the scenario. So we're gonna take you around for two more scenarios, see how we go. All right, so the next awkward little shot we're gonna be talking about around the green 
is this one here. We've got an upslope into the flag, very minimal green to work with. Again, I'm putting you in the scenario, I'm on a par four now, I've missed the green to the left-hand side. I wanna be trying to get up and down for a four, or if you're a higher handicap, you have to get this ball on the green. I stress this all the time to golfers that I coach. Start from 10 yards and work out, but you've gotta get it to one chip or pitch. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that, that literally made no sense and two putts okay so when you start when you come when you're confident you're doing that from inside of 10 feet or 10 yards go to 20 30 40 50 and i promise you the better you get at one pitch and two putts your scores will tumble down if we get to a point where inside of 100 yards you, you hit the green and two put every single time, forget about getting up and down where you pitch onto the green and two put every single time, scores will 100%, I promise you, lower. Absolutely, definitely will, okay? Massive statement. Right, so as you've seen, this shot is very tricky, okay? We've got an up slope. I'm coming from a little bit of rough and I've got very minimal green to work with. So I've got two shot options here. Again, very, very much similar to the last shot. I can, be, I can be quite cute. I can be quite methodical in kind of tactical as well in terms of making sure I land this in the perfect place so it finishes as close as possible to the hole, giving, me a chance, giving myself a chance of a four. Or I can just get it up onto the green inside of 20 feet, two, pe two putts and make a bogey, which for a higher handicapper is a good outcome. I see many, many times high handicappers from here trying to get super cute. And by doing so, just hit the ball and leave the ball on the apron of the green and then they have to chip again and it leads to a two putt. And the frustrating thing is, and we've all, and we've all done this, you walk off the golf, you walk off that hole having made double bogey and gone, you know what, I hit a decent drive. I hit a decent second shot, I just missed the green, and I've made a six. And you're like, how? And it's because of these little shots here. And sometimes we don't notice them as much because we're so happy with the drive, but very, very easy just to kind of decelerate on this, leave it short of the green, chip it on two putts, just frustrating. So what I'm gonna try and get you to do on this one is just be a little bit more conscious of distance control. So we're gonna go ball position in the, stand, in the center of the stance. I'm not gonna dig my hands forward. Worst thing you can do on a slope like this, when it's an upslope going away from the target is put your hands forward like that. Because if you dig it into the turf, the ball's, you're gonna duff it. The ball's not gonna go very far. So I'm gonna play this, make sure this bounce works up the slope, all right? So making sure as I'm rotating my body, the bounce of the club, the sole of the club is working up the slope okay even on that one, i actually think that was a perfect example because i caught it a tiny tiny bit heavy but because i caught it heavy from the bounce it just bounced into the back of the ball and it was enough to get myself up there i lost a bit of power because it was a bit heavy but it's up by the green very oh, sorry, up by the flag very very close had i put my hands forward and that would have dug into the ground with the leading edge and not the bounce it wouldn't have made it it would have gone about here okay so same again using the bounce ball position in the center standard little chip shot Using the bounce a lot better there, that was really nice. Just use the slope. Think of this slope as your launch pad. Notice how I'm not saying open the face and get cute with it. We're using the slope as the actual launch pad. So we're just letting the bounce glide up the slope. It pops up into the air nice and high and it comes out to be a very good shot. Again, if you're not confident with this, I've got a 58 degree as usual. If you follow my golf in general, you'll know that I always pull this club out. I need to stop playing with this. You could use a 50 degree, you could use a pitching wedge. Follow the slope up, get the ball up onto the green. Worst case scenario, two put. If you wanna get a little bit cuter, use a little bit more loft so the ball stops faster. Right, onto the next scenario. Okay, and third and final scenario I'm gonna put you in, guys. And obviously this is all scenario based on what I'm doing in front of me. You're not gonna have the exact same scenario on the golf course, but hopefully you can kind of revert back and go actually, yeah, this was this is be my normal decision from that situation let's try something different and on the next on, the, on your next round of golf do a little bit of trial and error try different clubs that you wouldn't normally try try different shots that you wouldn't normally try and you'd be surprised that you'll be better at some shots than you think you might hit some shots and go nope 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 never again cheers Andy you just cost me a quadruple bogey or you might just go that is a nice shot that at least you may use it more often or call upon or have the confidence to use it again that's the key having more shots in your armory is massively important particularly for short game 
practice what I preach, Carter, because I don't do that either. Right, so with this sort of situation, now we've got the whole green to work with. The flag is at the other side of the green. If I go more than about six foot past that flag, the ball is going over the other side of the green, okay? Now, I see this shot a lot. Lob wedge comes out, try and land the ball about three quarters of the way, and if we catch it anything other than perfect, like that, it's landed past the flag and it's gone down the hill the other side. Or even knowing that that could happen brings this into play. The front edge of the green, the duff shot, or again, being too careful, actually hitting quite a nice shot, but just getting no way near the flag because at the back of your mind, you are a little bit worried that you'll thin it over the back. So there's so many things that go on in our heads. Golf is, golf is tough. It's like mental warfare, isn't it? So if we do use the lob wedge, we don't need anything more. We don't, certainly don't need any more height. For, he, for me, I've got like a slope that finishes about halfway um, down towards the flag. So I'm going to try and land it just over that one. Big thing to try and make sure as well, even though we're quite close to the green, still get the hips and the shoulders rotating. Don't go too static. If we go too static and just use the arms, it's very easy just to extend the arms straight down into the ground. So make sure you're using the, the hips and the shoulders so you get that nice strike on the way through. On that shot there, just caught the slope and it's, it's bang average. It's about 10 feet away from the flag. So I can tell myself that it's definitely not going to be worse than a bogey, but I want to be getting up and down. So I would suggest I bypass my sandwich, my gap wedge, and I've gone straight to my pitch, okay? I'm going to try and land the pitching wedge at the top of this slope. And I'm going to read the green a little bit. So it's a little bit left to right. It actually goes right to left towards the end. I'm going to keep the ball position in my stance in the center and I'm just going to try to create the same sort of movement pattern as I do with the 58 degree but I'm just going to do it shorter I'm just going to do it softer and shorter it comes out lower and it's just going to have that little bit of extra and it's used the momentum of the slope and it's coming back around five feet so I've got closer than the 50, the 58 degree that I've just used and I've got to be perfectly honest right now guys that's the first time I've ever even tried that shot. And already I'm thinking to myself, I need to use that scenario more often. I need to use that chip shot a lot more often. We had a conversation in the office yesterday and Graham McDowell, who is one of the best wedge players in the world, he uses a nine iron so up, like a lot apparently around the green. I had absolutely no idea. I think we just watch these plays and just think they're using like a gap or sand wedge and just spinning it in there. He uses a nine iron, uses a lot of manipulation, uses a lot of hands, changes the loft, changes the spin. Very, very skilled wedge player, nine iron player, wedge player, short game player. So the amount of options that we do have and we don't utilize is so important, but also we need to utilize these options based on handicap shots and what the desired outcome, which let's be fair, will always be an up and down, but we've got to also be, a, not trying to be negative, but be avoidance, make sure we've got the avoidance of making that double or triple or quadruple bogey, because they are absolute card wreckers, as you know, and as I know as well. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this three very different scenarios that we can adapt and get better at and learn when we're on the golf course to lower scores. If you have enjoyed this video, wow, golf ball just landed really close to the camera. Guys, that, is a, that must be a shank. It's all right. He's waving. Excellent. I hope you're watching this video. Come and see me for lessons because that is wide. Anyway, better get out of here. Thanks for watching. See you again very soon.